All right, so um, let me talk about something that's pretty related to that, but it has some other uses as well. Um, so this particular optic is called a Faraday isolator. Um, so fer a, a Faraday optical isolator, just before I describe how it works, um, just if all you want to know is what it does, basically what a Faraday optical isolator is, is just a way to allow a laser to go through, but not come back. Um, this is a pretty important piece of optics for you know keeping the hardware stable. So um, in time domain thermoreflectance, we'll generally be using a titanium sapphire laser, and um, those lasers are extremely sensitive to back reflections. So if any light reflects you know from optics that are on your laser table and gets back into the original laser, it'll destabilize it, and you'll no longer have pulses. So this is definitely something we want to avoid. Um, and typically the way this is avoided is by using a Faraday optical isolator, which is just a unidirectional valve for light. Um, so um, that's basically its use. The, I think the operation of this is somewhat complicated, but if you want to have some idea of how it works, basically what it does um, is it uses the concept of Faraday rotation, which is a it, it's actually not messing with the electric field, it's, measure, it's messing with the magnetic portion of the electromagnetic field. And what it does is um, it rotates the polarization of light in the same direction regardless of which direction the light is traveling. Um, and so like for example the way these things are normally designed is um, you've got a Faraday rotator that sits in between two, two polarizing beam splitters. Um, and one of the polarizing beam splitters is usually offset to 45 degrees. So the way this works, I've sort of schematically shown on the left, is that a laser beam comes in um, through the bottom. Usually the first polarizing beam splitter is there to ensure that the entering polarization is entirely aligned in one direction. Um, and so that's the blue direction. So the incident polarization, when it gets to the Faraday isolator, is entirely, for example, in the up direction. And then as the light goes through this so-called Faraday rotator, um, which is basically just a magnetic, you know, transparent crystal, the um, the light, the polarization of the light will rotate by 45 degrees. Then it gets to this other polarizing beam splitter or polarizer. And because that polarizer is set up exactly the right way, it will essentially allow 100% transmission of the, that polarization through the polarizing beam splitter. Um, now think about what happens on the other approach. So this is the dotted black line. So if I'm approaching from the right um, and I have some, I don't actually know what the polarization is. So um, it could be any old pol any old polarization, but you know, as it approaches, this polarizer is going to separate it into um, stuff that's parallel and perpendicular. So um, the polarizer set up so that it only tr like it only transmits stuff that's you know perpendicular to the polarizer. So that's this vector called P sub R. Um, then as that goes through the Faraday rotator. Um, it will actually continue to rotate in the same direction as the other laser beam did, because for a Faraday rotator, the key property is that it rotates the polarization of light the same, regardless of what, which direction the um, light enters from. Um, and so it continues to rotate it around, um, I guess I would call that uh, clockwise from where I'm sitting. And then when it approaches the polarizing beam splitter to the left, it's polarized in a way so that it gets rejected. So it doesn't go back and transmit through the polarizer. So that's basically how it works. So, it, so this thing is set up so that it allows light to, to go directly through the polarizer with 100% transmission, but when it comes back the other way, it filters it and rejects it with 100% um, rejection rate. That's the whole idea. So that's a Faraday isolator um, in a nutshell. Um, now, so, so that's basically how it works. Now, I'll point out again that um, the, the first optic in a Faraday isolator is typically a polarizing beam splitter. So what's cool about that? Um, oh, I should also say sometimes the, yeah, no, anyway, whatever, I'm not going to say that. So, um, so the, um, 
because the first optic is a polarizer or a polarizing beam splitter, what happens is um, when you, so you can exploit that to actually create a combination of a half wave plate and a polarizing beam splitter. So you can sort of, um, you can use a Faraday isolator to help you do power selection. If you just place a half wave plate right before a, a Faraday isolator, um, then the portion of the laser beam that's rejected at the first optic, um, that can actually be used as the polarizing beam splitter in a half wave plate polarizing beam splitter combo. And so you can use a Faraday isolator as both a light rejection unit and a, um, and, and a power selector. So some time domain thermoreflectance systems will do that. I don't, I don't actually do that on my system, but um, for example, David Cahill's original system did this, and I think a number of other people are doing this.